All right, so let's get started with the review. Your test tomorrow for seniors is on hyperbolas and quadratics, bless you. So the first little section of our review is about hyperbolas. So looking at number one, given the vertices and foci, write the equation of the hyperbola in standard form. So first, we're gonna use our standard form of a hyperbola, but we wanna know which one are we gonna use this one, which is if our, if our vertices and our foci are on a horizontal line, so our hyperbola would look like this, or we would use the other one if it's vertical. So our hyperbola would look like this. So let's figure out which one we're gonna use. It would help if we plot the points. So our vertices are at positive three and negative three at zero. So we go to positive three and negative three and stay at zero. So are we gonna use the equation where x comes first or where y comes first? where x comes first because we see that it's going to be a horizontal hyperbola. So our standard form is going to be x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now let's plot our foci also. So that is at positive and negative 6. So we're already at three, three more would be six, and three more this way would be six. We need to know our A, B, and C, and our H and K. So do we know what the center is here? What's the center of our hyperbola? So our center is in the middle of our vertices. If we have a vertex here and a vertex here, what's the middle of those two? Zero zero. zero, zero. So our center is at zero, zero. So that's our H and our K. Now we can figure out what our A is because that's the distance from the center to a vertex. So what's the distance from our center to a vertex? This distance here. One, two, three. So A is three. C is the distance from the center to the foci. So what's the distance from the center to the foci? We go one, two, three, four, five, six. So C is six. And then what's the formula we can do once we have two of them to find the third? How can we find B? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So our a squared is 9, our b squared is what we're trying to find, and c squared would be 6 squared, which is 36. So subtract 9 on both sides. So b squared is 27. So if we take the square root, b is equal to the square root of 27, and how can we simplify the square root of 27? What are two factors of 27? Nine and, three. Nine and three. Nine can come out as a three on the outside, so three square root three is our B. Everybody with me so far? Once we have H, K, A, and B, we can plug it in and then we're done. So we have X, minus h, and what's our h? Zero, because that came from our center. 
squared over, what's our a squared? Nine, perfect, because a is three. So a squared is nine. Minus y minus k, and what's our k? Zero squared over, what's our b squared? 27. And then that's equal to what? One. Which we can make this a little bit cleaner because we don't need that x minus zero, so it would just be x squared over nine minus y squared over 27 is equal to one. All right, let's take a look at number two. So we're given our hyperbola in standard form and we need to come up with center, a, b, and c, vertices, foci, and asymptotes. So right off the bat, what's our center? Three, one, perfect. Comes from our H and our K, we just need to flip the signs. Now, always, if you look at our equations up here, always, always, the A squared comes first. So it doesn't matter if it's under the X or if it's under the Y, the A squared always is the first one. So if A squared is equal to nine, what's our A? three. And then that means the second one is our b squared. So if b squared is equal to one, what's our b? One. And then how can we find c? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So three squared plus one squared equals c squared. Nine plus one is c squared, so 10 is equal to c squared. So what's our c? Just the square root of 10. Now let's figure out our vertices. So if our center is at 3, 1, we're going to go to the right 3 and up 1. Our vertices are a distance away from our center. And looking at our equation that was given, x comes first. So that means we're moving horizontally. So our vertices are going to go to the right 3 and to the left 3 from our center. So we're going to go to the right 3 and to the left 3. So our two vertices are at 0, 1, and 6, 1. And then our foci is whatever C distance from our center. So if our center is at 3, 1, we're moving to the right square root 10 and to the left square root 10. So we would say 3 plus square root 10. And we're also going to the left, so 3 minus square root 10. So you can put it all together in 1 and say 3 plus or minus square root 10. And then we're still up at 1, so our y would be 1. And then for our asymptote, we need our equation up at the top. This one goes with when your x comes first. So since our x comes first, we're going to use the one that has b over a. So to find our asymptote, we have y is equal to k plus or minus a b over a times x minus h. And we can plug in everything we have. So y is equal to k is 1 plus or minus b is 1, a is 3, x minus h, which is 3. Now, since your test is multiple choice, you could see it like this, or you could see it simplified a bit. So we would just distribute this to the inside. And we can split it up into two different formulas. So we'll have the positive one, y is equal to 1 plus 1 third x minus 1 third times 3 would be 1. And then we would have y is equal to 1 minus 1 third x. So now I'm distributing the negative with it. 
and then plus one third times three is one. And then just combine the like terms. So y is equal to the ones cancel here. So one third x and y is equal to negative one third x plus two. So these are our two equations for our asymptotes. So let's take a look at number four. Before we do anything, we want to put this in standard form. We know standard form has to be equal to 1. So how do we make this look equal to 1? Divide everything by 36. And then we simplify. So 4 goes into 36 9 times. We have x squared over 9. And then 9 goes into 36 4 times. So this would be minus y squared over 4. And 36 divided by 36 is 1. So this is our standard form here. What is our center? Zero, zero. Awesome, zero, zero. What's our A? Three. three. So A squared is nine, so A is three. That means B squared is four, so what's our B? Two, Two. and how do we find C? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared is 9 plus B squared is 4. And that's equal to C squared. So 13 is equal to C squared. So C is the square root of 13. Now let's figure out where our vertices are. So our graph, our center is at 0, 0. Our vertices are a spaces away from our center. Are we going horizontally or vertically if we start with x squared? Horizontally. horizontally. So we're going to go to the right and to the left, three spaces. So one, two, three. There's one of our vertex. One, two, three. There's another vertex. So our two vertices are at three, zero, and negative three, zero. Now we do the same thing with our foci. So the foci are C spaces away from our center. So our center, we go to the right, square root 13, and to the left, square root 13. So our foci are going to be at square root 13, 0, and negative square root 13, 0. And then we want to figure out our asymptotes. x squared comes first, so we use our asymptote formula with b over a. So y is equal to k plus or minus b over a times x minus h. y is equal to 0. Plus or minus our b is 2. Our a is 3. x minus 0. So this would just be y is equal to plus or minus 2 over 3 times x. All right. What do we have to do first for number 5? Divide everything by 24. So we would have y squared over 4 minus x squared over 8 is equal to 1. What is our center? 0, 0. What is our a? Perfect. The first one is always your a squared. So if a squared is 4, that means a is 2. The second one is always your b squared. So what's our b? 2 square root 2. Perfect. How do we find our c? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 4 plus 8 equals c squared. 12 is equal to c squared. So c is the square root of 12. How can we simplify the square root of 12? 
2 squared root 3. Awesome. 12 breaks down into 4 and 3, and 4 comes out as a 2. All right, now let's figure out our vertices. Ms. Carter? Yes. Why do you subtract 24? I... Like, why did you divide it? Because we want this to be 1. So you can't just subtract it over, because if you subtracted 24 minus 24, that would be 0. But you have to divide it, because 24 divided by 24 is 1. So we want to get this to look in standard form. That way we can identify everything. So that's why we have to divide everything by 24 to get this to be equal to 1. So our vertices are a distance from our center. For this one, are we moving horizontally or vertically? If we start with y squared here, vertically. So that means we go up to and down to. So our vertices are going to be at 0, positive 2, and 0, negative 2. Now our foci, our c distance from the center. And just like the vertices, since we went vertically, we went up and down, we go up and down for the foci too. So it's going to be 0, comma, we're going to go up 2 square root 3, and we're going to go down 2 square root 3. So we can say 0 plus or minus 2 square root 3. If you wanted to split it up into two separate ones, that's fine. Remember, it's multiple choice, so you'll just see your answer choices. Now let's figure out our asymptotes. So since we're vertically here, we use our asymptote formula that is k plus or minus a over b, x minus h. So y is equal to 0, plus or minus our a is 2, our b is 2 square root 2 times x minus h. So y is equal to plus or minus 2 over 2 square root 2 times x, because this is 0. We want to simplify. The 2's will cancel. So we have 1 over square root 2. Your answer choices may not look like this because we don't like square roots in our denominator. So we want to make sure we rationalize. So multiply the top and the bottom by square root 2. So this would be y is equal to plus or minus square root 2 over 2 times x. Your answer choices may look like that, 1 over square root 2. You just kind of got to see. If it doesn't, you know you just have to rationalize, and it's the same thing. All right, any questions from this page? All right, let's go back to number 3. So start off at the center. That would be negative or positive 2, comma, negative 6. So remember the x, the h, always goes with the x. That's my x value, my y value. But just flip the signs. So 2, negative 6. The first one is always my a squared. So if a squared is 1 ninth, that means a is 1 third. Second one is always my b squared. So if b squared is 1 fourth, my b is 1 half. And then Pythagorean theorem to find my c. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared is 1 over 9. b squared is 1 over 4. And that's equal to c squared. So 1 over 9 plus 1 over 4. I need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply my top and the bottom here by 4. So this would be 4 over 36. Multiply the top and the bottom here by 9. This would be 9 over 36. 4 plus 9 is 13 over 36, and that's equal to c squared. Take the square root, so I get 13, square root of 13 over square root of 36 is 6.
So let's figure out my, my vertices are. So since my y comes first, I'm going up and down. So let's plot the center. We go to the right two and down six. And we go up and down a unit star vertices. So we're going up one third and down one third. So our x stays the same because we're just to the right two. And then we're going up six, up one third and down one third from six. So from negative six. So we start at negative six. We can just say plus or minus one third. Now again, since your test is multiple choice, it may be like an improper fraction. You may see like negative six and one third. So just know that this can be written different ways or it could just be written like this. Next, let's look at the foci. So again, foci, we're going up and down. So our x stays the same. We're still to the right, two units. We go up. 13 over 6 and down 13 over square root 13 over 6. So negative 6 plus or minus square root 13 over 6. And then lastly, let's look at our asymptotes. We are using the formula since we're going up and down and our y comes first, the a over b1. So y is equal to k plus or minus a over b times x minus, right, minus h. So k, this is our h, this is our k, k is negative 6, plus or minus a over b. So our a is 1 third, our b is 1 half, our x minus h, so that would be minus 2. Alright, first thing we want to do is figure out what this part is here. Oh, my pencil decided to work, maybe. Nope, still no. Almost got through the whole thing with my pencil. Working. So, one third Keep change flip, change to multiplication, flip the second fraction, so 2 over 1, so this would be 2 thirds, plus or minus 2 thirds times x, and then 2 thirds times negative 2 would be, well, let's split it up into the positive and negative version. So first let's do the positive 2 thirds times x, and then positive 2 thirds times negative 2 would be negative 4 thirds, this is negative 6. And then we can do the negative version of it. So y is equal to negative 6 minus 2 thirds. So we're distributing that negative 2 thirds to both things in here. So negative 2 thirds times 2 would be plus 4 thirds. So I have y is equal to negative 6 minus 4 thirds. I want to combine my like terms here. So negative 6 I can change to negative 18 over 3 just by multiplying the top and the bottom by 3. So negative 18 minus 4 would be negative 22. So negative 22 over 3. That is one asymptote. And then do the same thing over here. Make this negative 18 over 3. Negative 18 plus 4 would be negative 14. So y is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 14 over 3. That's my second asymptote. Let's move on to, oh, we're still on hyperbolas for the next page. Oh, completing the square, our favorite. So when completing the square, we want to put our x's together and our y's together and then move our constant to the other side. So just because my y comes first here, I'm just going to start with the y's. 
So 9y squared plus 54y. I'm going to leave a space to help me complete the square. And then I have minus x squared plus 2x. Leave a space. And I'm going to move my 62 over by subtracting 62. Everybody with me so far? Some common mistakes from the last test when you guys had to complete the square was people put like these two together, just the first two. Can't put x's with y's. Make sure you're putting the y's together. Make sure you're putting the x's together. So looking at the y's, what should we do first? Take out the 9. So we're going to pull out that 9. So we have y squared plus 54 divided by 9 is 6. So 6y. And then what's going to go in here to help me complete the square? B over 2 squared. B over two squared. So that would be 6 over 2 squared. 6 over 2 is 3. So I have 3 squared in here. 3 squared is 9. So I'm adding 9 in here, but I'm also multiplying that times the 9 on the outside. So technically, I'm adding 81 on the left side of the equation. So that would be 9 times 9 is 81. So if I'm adding 81 on the left side, I have to add 81 on the right side as well. So now I'm going to put this into my binomial. What goes in here? Y and, uh, plus three. Awesome. Y plus 3. It's always whatever is squared in the front and whatever is squared here. Because then it ends up being squared here. So now let's do the same thing with our x's. What should I do first with my x's? Awesome. Take the negative out. So I'm going to divide both of these by negative 1. So I have x squared minus 2x. What goes in here to help me complete the square? Negative 2 over 2 squared. So negative 2 over 2 is just negative 1. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. So I'm adding a positive 1 in here. But I have to multiply it by that negative that I took out. So I'm actually subtracting 1 on the inside. So if I subtract 1 on the left side, I have to subtract 1 on the right side too. Now let's write my binomial. So I have a minus. What goes in here? What goes in my binomial? My parentheses down here. X. What else? Awesome. x minus 1. The squared term here and the squared term here. And then that's going to be equal to all this stuff on the right side. So negative 62 plus 81 minus 1 is positive 18. And I just need to divide everything by 18 because in my standard form it's equal to 1 so I need to make this equal to 1 so divide everything by 18 and simplify 9 goes into 18 twice so this would be y plus 3 squared over 2 minus x minus 1 squared over 18 is equal to 1 that's my standard form 
All right. Number seven. What should I do first? Put my x's and y's together. So I have 9x squared. My other x is plus 54x. My y's are negative y squared plus 10y. And then I'm going to move that 55 to the other side by subtracting 55. Now let's look at my x's. What do I need to do first with my x's? Take out the 9. So x squared plus 6x. What goes in here to help me complete the square? Six over two squared. Six over two is three, so three squared. So in here, I'm adding nine, because three squared is nine, but I need to multiply it by that nine on the outside. So technically, I am adding 81 in here. So since I'm adding 81 on the left side, I need to add 81 on the right side as well. Now I can write my binomial squared. What goes inside my parentheses? X plus three. X plus three. Perfect. Let's move on to the y's. What do I need to do first with my y's? Take out the negative. So I'm pulling out that negative. I'm dividing both of these by negative 1. So I have negative on the outside. y squared minus 10y. And then what's going to go in here to help me complete the square? negative 10 over 2 squared. Whatever the sign is here, it sticks with it. So negative 10 over 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. So I'm adding 25 in here, but I'm actually multiplying that by a negative. So I'm technically subtracting 25 on the left side. So I have to subtract 25 on the right side also. And then what's going to go into my binomial down here? What goes in the parentheses? Perfect, y minus five. And then that's going to be equal to, you gotta add all these up, which they add up to one, yep. Now, since the test is multiple choice, you may see it like this. You may see it like this. Or, since this 9 is actually supposed to be in your denominator, it might look like x plus 3 squared over 1 over 9. So just know that these are the same thing. So you may see it look like this one, or you may see it look like this one. So let's take a look at number 8. So given the vertex and a point on the parabola, write the equation of the parabola in vertex form and standard form. So we always start by plugging everything in into vertex form. This is vertex form. That way we can figure out what our a is, and then we can just multiply it out and make it look like standard form. So let's start with vertex form. 1, negative 2 is our h and k, since that's our vertex, and negative 1 is our x, and negative 14 is our y, since that's just a point on our parabola. So we plug everything we have into our vertex form. 
So y is negative 14, and that's equal to a, which we don't know yet. We're going to try to figure it out, times x minus h. So x is negative 1 minus h is 1 squared plus k is negative 2. Just make sure you follow your order of operations here. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is 4, so we have 4a minus 2. Add 2 on both sides. Negative 12 is equal to 4a. Divide by 4, so a is equal to negative 3. Now we just take that and our h and k and plug it into our vertex form. So y is equal to negative 3 times x minus h, which is 1, squared, plus k, so this would be minus 2. That is our vertex form. Now we use our vertex form to help us find our standard form. So y is equal to negative 3, x minus 1 squared minus 2. Again, just make sure you follow your order of operations. We have to square this first. So this is like saying x minus 1 times x minus 1. We need a FOIL. So negative 3. When we FOIL this, we have x squared minus x minus another x, so minus 2x. And then negative 1 times negative 1 would be plus 1. So I just foiled that x minus 1 squared. And then next, I want to distribute the negative 3. So I have negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 3 minus 2. And then lastly, you're going to combine your like terms. So negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 5. Do it one more time with number nine. So our vertex is our h and k. Our point is our x and y. So y is equal to a. Y is four. So four is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. So plus negative 1. Do the inside of the parentheses first. So this becomes negative 2 plus 4, which is 2. And 2 squared is 4. So this is 4a minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. 5 is equal to 4a. Divide by 4. a is equal to 5 over 4. So we plug this into our vertex form. So y is equal to 5 over 4 times x plus 4 squared minus 1. Vertex form. Any questions? All right, let's find standard form. So do the same thing we did in the last one. First thing we need to do is FOIL this out. So this is like saying x plus 4 times x plus 4. So 5 fourths. I'm going to multiply that all out. So x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Four, 4 times x is 4x. So 4x plus 4x is 8x. And then 4 times 4 is 16. And then minus 1. What should I do next? What do I do next? I need to distribute. 
So 5 fourths x squared. Next, I have 5 fourths times 8. So this would be, multiply the tops together, 40 over 4, which is 10. So plus 10x. And then I have 5 fourths times 16. So I can simplify. So 5 times 4 would be 20. And then just combine the like terms here at the end. 5 fourths x squared plus 10x. 20 minus 1 is 19, so plus 19. So this is my standard form. All right, number 10. We have to identify the vertex, domain and range, max, min, and x-intercepts. We should also find the axis of symmetry, even though it doesn't say it, but the axis of symmetry will help us with our vertex. So let's do that first. So our axis of symmetry is what? What formula do we use to find our axis of symmetry? Awesome, negative b over 2a. So our b is our middle term, negative 2 over 2 times our coefficient in front of the first term. So 2 times negative 1. So we get negative 2 over negative 2, which is just 1. So our axis of symmetry is x is equal to 1. Now, let's find our vertex. What is the first number in our vertex going to be? Same thing as the axis of symmetry, so 1. How do we find the y value in our vertex? Plug 1 in for all of our x's. So we have negative 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 5. So this would be negative 1 plus 2 plus 5. So that would be 6. So our y value in our vertex is 6. Next, let's find our x and y intercepts. How do we find our x-intercept? Set y equal to 0. So 0 is equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 5. We have negative b, so that becomes a positive 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative 2 squared would be 4, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 5, over 2 times a. So we always, always, always want to check under our square root, because if it's negative, there's no x-intercept. You cannot have an imaginary number as your x-intercept. So if this is negative under our square root, there'd be no x-intercept. So under our square root, we have 4. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 5 is positive 20. So this is 4 times 4 plus 20, so 24. 
So not negative, so we'll end up with a square root with a x-intercept, just not a pretty x-intercept. Can we simplify the square root of 24? What are two factors of 24? 4 and 6. 4 comes out as 2, so 2 square root 6. So this is 2, plus or minus 2 square root 6 over 2. Can we simplify this? No. Yup. Everything is divisible by 2. So we can just say it is 1, plus or minus square root 6. So this is our x-intercept. You may see the x-intercept just listed like this, or it could be written as a point. So it would be 1 plus or minus square root 6 comma 0, because 0 is what we plugged in for y, so the 0 would come second. So you could see it like this also. So that's our x-intercept. How do we find the y-intercept? Just look at our equation. Whatever our constant is, that's our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is 5. You may just see it as a number, but sometimes it can be written as a point. Since we plugged in 0 for x for our y-intercept, it's 0, 5. Now, what is our domain of our graph? All real numbers. It will always be all real numbers. You may see it like this. You may see it as all real numbers. Or it would be negative infinity to infinity. All the same thing. And then next we want to figure out our range. Looking at our equation up here, does our graph open up or open down? It opens down. It's a sad face because this is negative. So what is our range? What is the lowest value our graph can have if our arrows are pointing down? Negative infinity. And then what's our highest y value that our graph is going to have? 6. That y value always comes from the vertex. And then do we have a maximum or minimum here? A maximum, because our vertex is at the highest point of our graph. And what is our maximum value? 6. Again, that maximum or minimum always comes from the y value of your vertex. Number 11. First, let's find our axis of symmetry. What's our formula for axis of symmetry? Negative b over 2a. So we have negative, negative 4 over 2 times positive 4. So 4 over 8 simplifies to 1 half. So our vertex, what's our y value, of our, or our x value of our vertex? One half. How do we find the y value? Plug the one half into, the one half into our equation. So we have 4 times 1 half squared minus 4 times 1 half plus 21. 1 half squared would be 1 fourth. So 1 fourth times 4 would be 4 over 4 which is just 1. 4 over 2 would be 2. I love when it starts off with fractions and works out as whole numbers. How fun. So 1 minus 2 plus 21 is 20. So our y value of our vertex is 20. Now let's find our x-intercept. How do we find the x-intercept? So 
set y is 0. So 0 is equal to 4x squared minus 4x plus 21. We can multiply our first and our last term, and this would be 84. Do we have two factors of 84 that add to negative 4? No. Nope, so we have to do the quadratic. So negative b, negative, negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 16, minus 4 times a times c. over 2a. Always check under our radical first to see if we end up with a positive or negative. So this would be, it's going to be a negative. 16 minus 16 times 21, which is 16 times 21 is bigger than 16, so it's going to be negative. So this is a negative number. So what's our x-intercept? If it's negative, what's our x-intercept? Does not exist. No x-intercept, none, does not exist. You could see any of the above. Does not exist. No x-intercept. So if under the square root you get a negative, That means it does not exist. All right, let's find our y-intercept. What's our y-intercept? Just by looking at our equation, what is our y-intercept? 21. 21. It is always our constant here. So 0, 21. What's our domain? All real, all real numbers. It is always all real numbers. What's our range? Let's see. Do we open up or open down? Up. Our graph opens up because our x squared term is positive. So we have a smiley face going on here. So what's our range? What's our smallest value our graph can be? 20. 20, perfect. It always comes from the y in your vertex. So 20, and then what does our graph go to? Infinity. To infinity, because it goes up forever. Is our vertex at the maximum or minimum? It is at the minimum. And what is our minimum value? 20. All right, so the number 12, we're doing the same thing. First, start with the axis of symmetry. That would be negative b over 2a. So our b is negative 1, so negative negative 1 over 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. So this would be 1 fourth. So that means our x value in our vertex is 1 fourth, and we need to plug that in to find our y value. So this would be 2 times 1 fourth squared minus 1 fourth plus 1. So 1 fourth squared would be 1 over 16. 2 over 16 would simplify to 1 over 8. So 1 over 8 minus 1 over 4 plus 1. I'm going to change everything to have a denominator of 8 just so I can combine it all together. So make this 2 over 8 and this would be 8 over 8. So add my numerators together. 1 minus 2 plus 8 would be 7 over 8. So my x value in my vertex is 7 over 8. I mean my y value, sorry. Y value in my vertex, 7 over 8. Next, let's find the x-intercepts. So x-intercepts, I plug in 0 for y. 0 is equal to 2x squared minus x plus 1. Um, it doesn't factor, so let me plug it into the quadratic formula just to see if I'm going to have an x-intercept or not. 
So that would be negative b, so negative, negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a times c. So right off the bat here, I can see I have 1 minus 8, which is negative 7. So I get a negative number under here, so there is no x-intercept. Next, I'm going to find my y-intercept. So I plug in 0 for x. I also know that my y-intercept is always going to be this constant number. So my y-intercept is 1. Next, let's find the domain. Domain is always, 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 always all real numbers. And then for my range, I want to figure out if it opens up or down. Range, I spelled it wrong. There we go. Since my x squared term is positive, that means my graph opens up. So my lowest value is going to be at my vertex. So the y value of my vertex is 7 over 8. And then it goes up to infinity, so my range ends at infinity. And then my maximum or minimum, since my vertex is at the lowest point of the graph, that means I have a minimum value, and that minimum is going to be the same as the y value in my vertex, which is the same as the value in my range, so that would be 7 over 8.